Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here this afternoon for Kaguya-sama Love is War Episode 2. Last time on Kaguya-sama, we were introduced to the main conceit of the series, which is that both of the main characters are actually interested in each other and neither of them is willing to admit it because the one who does has lost some ridiculous battle of whoever concedes first. Okay, it's the presentation, the use of ridiculous backgrounds, the -the over-the-top mind games that sell this show, and that's what it's all about, that's what it's for, and I love it. I really enjoy it. I do want to mention something because somebody on my Discord brought it up, and uh, I actually appreciate them, them bringing this up. They went through the entire staff list on this show and a number of other Shaft shows, and it is clear... After they've presented this information to me, it is clear that I shouldn't say things like there are a lot of Shaft staff working on this show because that's not quite accurate. Most of the staff are pulled from everywhere. Um, It's just that there are a couple of key staff who have experience working at Shaft. The director, I'm sorry, not the director, uh, the editor in particular is a Shaft, I don't know, graduate? Alum. Let's call him an alumnus. Um, But it's not like the whole crew is Shaft people. It's just that there are enough Shaft people working on this show, and they took enough inspiration from Shaft to make this show feel very much like a Shaft production, and totally unlike anything that I've ever seen come out of A1. So I just want to rescind anything that I've said saying like, giving credit to Shaft. I'm not giving credit to Shaft. All credit goes to the people who made this. I was just mistaken in thinking that so many of the people making this are Shaft alumni. Um, It's just not true. There's clearly some inspiration there. You can see it in the backgrounds and and, um, some of the cuts and some of the imagery. But let's be real. If there's no weird head tilt, head turn thing, it ain't a Shaft show. It still feels like one, though. And that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Better than feeling like an A1 Pictures show, which is to say utterly generic. So, anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way and say it. Yeah, so thank you for correcting me. I do appreciate it. Now, before we get into the episode chill stuff, you know how this goes. If you like the video, go ahead and do that. And if you want to be subbed and you're not, then go ahead and do that. And if you are subbed and you're not getting my videos, then go ahead and do that. Uh... Yeah. We lost one. We lost the bell. Oh no. Bell, come back. <laughs> ding ding ding. Okay. I'll just pop that right over here. And um as usual, if you really like this content, want to support it, want to enable me to continue making lots and lots of ad-free reactions and giving them to you, uh patreon.com slash tiabu is a place where you can go to Toss me a few bucks and get access to the Discord and all of our emotes and yeah, and help me keep doing this. It's really appreciated and huge shout out to all of you who do already support me on Discord or on Patreon. I see you in the Discord, but you support me via Patreon. Anyway. Kaguya-sama. There will be multiple versions of this video, um, so check the link if you want the version with the video in the video. Uh, it'll be available on BitChute in pretty mediocre quality because they re-encode everything terribly, and on Mega, where it'll be in pretty darn good quality, but you'll probably have to download it if you want to watch it, and then watch it in your own media player. If, however, you're cool with watching the timer-based version, which, if you're hearing me say this, is what you're watching right now, then stick around and we'll get into it. There will be a beep-beep timer, it'll go boop-boop-boop-beep, and on the beep and the green light, that'll be the same frame that the video starts playing on my screen via Crunchyroll. And I am watching by via Crunchyroll because it's not lagging for me, so why not? Uh, beep-beep timer goes here. This is episode two, right? Just check real quick. Yep, this is episode two. Okay, so this is all part of the intro, isn't it? Huh.
Kind of like Hiroaka doing the whole intro thing. I really like this OP. There are so many good OPs this season. It's nuts. Like, this OP is great. Mob Psycho 100 OP is, of course, amazing. Uh, Doro's OP is awesome. Hell, Shield Heroes OP is pretty darn good. Oh, Promise Neverland's OP is great. This is the season of great OPs. I love that she's got a little Derringer. It's great. This is the same as the first episode, isn't it? Only the most extraordinary. Hey, we get to see this scene again. I really like this scene. So, a lot of the effort going into this was because they were going to repeat it. Okay. So, like, the first four minutes or so, at least, are identical to the first episode. Let's see when it, when it starts with new content. Four twenty, it starts with new content. God damn. Kaguya wants to trade. Okay. Oh. <laughs> The line social app? Okay. <laughs> now that would be conceding defeat. Love.
Oh, well, I can't have that. <laughs> no chance. This is great. <laughs> she takes this real far. <laughs> oh! -ho -ho -ho! <laughs> uh huh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> these are in the format of stickers. That's great. Fake tears. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, she plays dirty. A maiden's tears activated. <laughs> <laughs> Except that you want it. <laughs> this character reminds me of Mako, which is a good thing. <laughs> Both lose. Why do I feel like she'll have another idea? <laughs> Shatter in 
Three, two, one. No. When chatter, though. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Classic. Lovely. That was a great transition. Timestamp. <laughs> this pattern overlay is great. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> you lose, bro. What are you going to do? You need a secret move. Ha <laughs> ha! You gotta give in, or you gotta have a secret move. Nice. <laughs> Flat is justice. <laughs> That's not how it works. Flat is justice. That was a great squeak. Good job, voice actress. <laughs> <laughs> rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season, duck season. She's gonna have her own idea. What's that? Maybe we shouldn't let you s you decide. Yep. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I love it. Miyuki wants to hide his ignorance. Okay. Okay. 
You're right. I am a master. <laughs> clueless. Absolutely clueless. You've also never asked anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He's going to dig himself a deep hole. You're right. <laughs> He's gonna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exact opposite of what you were saying before. <laughs> oh. It isn't. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> what Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kaguya. Eh? Yeah. 
He's the one ending up getting advice. <laughs> No. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Totally changed his tune. That's great. Maybe you should take your own advice. <laughs> oh, so it worked out. That's great. <laughs> All right. Cute. Okay, this was this was a fun episode. Pretty much exactly what I what I expected, which was more vignettes in the same in the same format. Um, there were a couple things that I wanted to mention. So here, let me see. Hmm, fourteen degrees Celsius is like fifty seven degrees Fahrenheit. I guess that's a little bit chilly. It's not very cold though. Um. The Barnum effect, which they referenced in passing, is not quite what they said it was. It's the tendency to accept, exact quote, the tendency to accept certain information as true, such as character assessments or horoscopes, even when the information is so vague as to be worthless. So it's not that, like, it's not what they said it was at all. It's it's a broad effect where people ascribe more importance and spe specificity to very vague and general descriptions that would apply to everyone. So it's like, oh, wow, this horoscope was made for me. No, it wasn't. Um, all in all, really good episode, keeping up the production values. Uh, the first four minutes being the same as the first episode was kind of wonky, but whatever. It's a good four minutes, so. All right, I do kind of hope that that's not continuous. Um, there was a transition at around 1140 that I really liked. It was the transition between the, uh, yeah, the sunset scene, right? And then we pan 
from here we pan down into blackness and then that blackness becomes Kaguya's hair and we pan down to her face. I just really like this transition. It's see we we pan into these like um I guess they're supposed to be ferns or some kind of foliage and then that becomes her hair and the the black background behind her. Really like that. Thought that was a cute little touch. And it the the episode was full of of cool cuts and cool backgrounds and background animation and stuff like that which kept it visually interesting even when nothing was super interesting that was happening right nice um i like the character of, of chika fujiwara she kind of reminds me of mako just in terms of her emotiveness uh in situations where everyone else is taking everything dead seriously she's sort of just like out of it and and goofy and doing her own thing um, especially in the scene where the two of them were against each other and she's just like, huh, 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 huh. Kind of cute. Um, cute adds a little bit of life and, and flair to the, the series. Pretty good. All in all, good episode. I will keep watching. Good, good stuff. Kaguya-sama. Me likey. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up. I've been Tibu. This has been Kaguya. You know how it be. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.